All right, let's start off here on number two. So for this one, um, we first checked GCF, but there's no GCF here. There's no uh, number that we can divide both of those by. So then um, this one is actually just a special pattern here. It's the difference of perfect squares. Um, and so I know that because uh, 49 is a perfect square, as is m squared. So with these ones, uh, we always kind of just take the square root of each of them. So it'll be m and 7. And then one of the parentheses is a plus and one of them is a minus. <clears throat> All right, number four is the same idea. There's no GCF here. So I do see, again, it's a difference of perfect squares. Uh, so the square root of 36 is 6. And then the a squared just turns into a. And then the square root of 1 is technically 1. So I put that in back. And I just do 1 plus and 1 minus back there. All right, next up, number six. Uh, I do see a GCF on this one. I can GCF a 2. I kind of know that because they're both even. Uh, so I'm going to take a 2 out front. And then uh, I have to divide both of these by 2. So 72 divided by 2, if you don't know that off the top of your head, that's okay. Actually, that'll be a 3 right there. Um, and so that'll be a 6, so that'll be 36. And now it is actually the difference of perfect squares. So I take away the, uh, the or I do the square root. So it'd be x and 6, and then once again, 1 plus and 1 minus. And then that 2 just stays out front. All right, next up, number 8. So this one, uh, I think uh, there's a GCF again. I think it's 3. So let me try to take out a 3 here. So does 147 divide by 3? Um, so this will be a 4 minus 12 would be 27. So it would be 9. So yes. So it will be uh, 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then I still have that x squared. And then minus 49. Uh, and then I uh, break it apart again. I see that all of these are perfect squares. So I do the square root of everything. So the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of x squared is x, and then this one is a 7. Uh, and then 2x and 7 there as well. Let me try to draw that 7 a little neater there, okay. And then once again, 1 plus and 1 minus, the order on those does not matter. All right, here uh, we're factoring trinomials here. So first of all, again, I see no GCF. Uh, so this is where I use the x. Uh, so we do a times c up top. So it's going to be 6 because this is a, b, and c is the numbers in front. Negative 7 is going to go on bottom. So I need to think of two numbers that multiply to 6, positive, but add to negative 7. So if they're multiplying to a positive, I think they both have to be negative if they're uh, adding to a negative. So I'd say negative 6 and negative 1. I double check that multiplies to positive 6 but adds to negative 7. Now we don't have, whenever our a value is 1, uh, then we can just uh, go to the next step is to just draw our parentheses with these numbers in there. So x minus 6 and x minus 1. And that's it. We're done. All right, next up here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and factor this again. I again see that there's no GCF here. So I have to jump into here and do a times c. So that will be 12 and then b is 8. So thinking of two numbers, I multiply to, to 12 and add to 8. Um, I think it will be 6 and 2. Let me double check. 6 times 2 is 12. Yes, 6 plus 2 is 8. Awesome. All right, and but this one, since we have this a is not 1, uh, we either need to use box or grouping. I'll go ahead and show the grouping here. I'll try the box on the next question. Uh, so the grouping here, uh, what you do is you take this 3n squared and you put it over here. You take the last term and you put it here. And then the numbers from your x you kind of put in the middle. Uh, but you put them with the variable. And the thinking here is that, um, and it doesn't matter which order, so I'll put the 6n and then the 2n, is that it should add up to this middle term of 8n, which you can see that it does. Then I use my grouping technique here. So I'll look at this group, take a 3n out front, which leaves me with n plus 2. And then this group, I take a 2 out front, which leaves me with n plus 2 as well. So then it turns into 3n plus 2 times n plus 2, and that's it. All right, next up here, number 14, I again see we have no GCF here because of that 19. So I'm going to use the x again. And this, uh, and so this one, a times c, is going to be uh, 48, uh, 4 times 12. And then b is negative 19. Uh, so I need to think of two numbers that multiply to 48 and add to negative 19. I'm going to think about what multiplies to 48. Uh, and I think they're going to have to both be negative here. So I know I used 4 and 12. Uh, that, that doesn't look like it adds up to 19. Uh, so I wonder what 3 is. So let's do um, 48 uh, divided by 3. And so that would be 16. So 3 times 16. And that one looks like it does work. So I'm going to have to make both of them negative. Okay. 
Uh, and then since uh, A is not one, uh, we're gonna have to use uh, grouping or the box. So I showed the grouping on the last question, so I'll go ahead and choose the, show the box technique on this one. Um, so for the box technique, you fill it out inside out, you put this uh, 4x squared up there, and then the 12 down there. And then again, kind of like the grouping technique, uh, these two are gonna go in the other two with an x because they should add up to that middle term. So it's negative 3x and then negative 16x. Now what I do is I look for uh, common factors going this way. So the common factor is gonna be 4x there. It's the biggest thing both of those can divide by. And then the biggest thing both of these can divide by is just a three. And then since the closer box is negative, it, it should be negative. And then we do the same thing going the other way. Now the, these two don't have any numbers in common, but I, they do have an X in common. So I'm gonna take that out there. And then for these two, the biggest number they can both divide by is four. And the closer box is again negative. Now what's nice about the box is you can double check your work. So do these two multiply to make that? Yes. Do these make negative three X? Yes. These make negative 16 X? Yes. And those make positive 12. And so these um, kind of answers here on the outside are going to be my answer to the question. So I get x minus 4 times 4x minus 3, and you can do that in either order. All right, next up, number 16. Uh, so actually, I do see a GCF here. They're all even, so I know I can GCF a 2. Um, I'll give you a hint on number 15. You do need the GCF here as well. Um, I'm not going to tell you the number, but try a couple out. So on this one, I need the GCF a 2, so that's going to leave me a 7n squared minus... Uh, 30n plus 8. And so now I'm going to build my x with kind of the inside here. Um, and I'm going to need the box here. I already know because I have the 7n squared there. Or, or you can use the grouping if you want. Uh, I also know that the 8 is going to go down there. And then I need to do a times c here, uh, which would be 56. And then negative 30 for b on bottom. So I need to think about what multiplies to 56 and adds to 30. So uh, let me break this down a little bit. I know I could do 1 and 56, but that's not going to work. 2 uh, would be 28. Uh, oh, and that already works. So I got negative 2, negative 28. And so those go here and uh, here with the variable in whatever order. Um, and so then I do GCF uh, going this way. So I get 7n. Uh, and then these two would be minus 2, since the closest box is negative. Then going this way is just n, and then going this way would be uh, minus 4. Double check this, negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. This makes negative 28n, 7n squared, and negative 2n. So then my answer, I do need to kind of keep this 2 out front, and then my factors here are in any order, uh, 7n minus 2 and n minus 4. All right, next up here, number 18, they just want us to do the common factor. So I just think about, is there a number these can all divide by? And in number 18, I see it. they can all divide by 2. And then also for the variables, what's the smallest exponent? So I'm going to take 4 out. So the numbers just divide, so this becomes 7, and it's really subtracting for the exponents, so it's going to become 4. I kind of think of it like I had 8 a's, but I took 4 out, so I have 4 left. This one will be uh, minus 1, because 2 divided by 2 is 1. And then I had 5 a's, and I took out 4, so now I only have 1 left. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3, uh, but that was negative. And then I took out all of the a's there, so there's not going to be an a left. Um, so there you go. You can, of course, write that middle term without the 1 there. That's probably better. So you can write it like that as well. All right, next up here, uh, I'm trying to factor some more. And so I have four terms. So our automatically, I'm thinking uh, for four terms, we usually do grouping. Um, and so I'll group the first two together. We'll factor out a v squared, which leaves me with 5v minus 4. There's no number I can take out of there. This uh, third term is negative. So whenever that happens, I always take out a negative number. It looks like both of these divide by 4. And if I divide by negative 4, then that would be 5v minus 4, because dividing by negative switches the signs. So then I can group this together as v squared minus 4, the stuff on the out squared, outside, times v, 5v minus 4, the stuff on the inside. Um, and then uh, I actually see right here that this one is the difference of perfect squares. And so I can break that apart uh, one more time. And we get v minus 2, v plus 2, and then 5v minus 4. 
All right, next up here, they want us to simplify, which uh, in this case, when you have the two parentheses just next to each other like that, that means multiply. And so I really like to use the box to multiply. Um, unlike factoring, this is kind of outside in, whereas factoring is really inside out. So we'll just multiply the big numbers and then add the exponents. This will be x to the third. Um, and then this one will be 9x squared, uh, 3x there, 4x squared, and then uh, 6x, and then 2. So then I would just combine like terms here, which means I would combine these two, which would give me 13x squared. These two would give me 9x, and then the 2 doesn't have anybody to combine with. All right, next up here, they want us to simplify now, but now uh, we have that there, which means this is subtract. This is not multiply, which means we need to distribute that negative there. Uh, I'm going to keep this one the same because there was nothing in front of that. And then I'm just going to combine like terms. So no multiplying here. Uh, so we have negative 3b to the fourth, no like term there. Um, we have negative 4b squared and positive 3b squared, so that's going to make negative 1b squared. And then negative 7 and negative 5 will make negative 12. All right, next up here we're dealing with parallel. And so parallel means a uh, same slope. And so I see the slope here is 5 over 3. Um, but uh, I'm not going to use this y-intercept. I need to find the y-intercept using this point. Uh, so what we can do is we can say uh, y equals mx plus b, but I know that the m is uh, 5 over 3. So I'm actually going to use this point as an x and a y to find that b value. So I plug the 3 in right there for y, a 3 in for x, and I'm going to put it as 3 over 1, and then plus b, I'm going to figure that out. Now, in this case, the 3 and the 3 actually cross-cancel there, so I can get uh, 3 equals 5 plus b, and then I subtract the 5 from each side, and I get that b equals negative 2. So my final answer would have that slope of 5 thirds, and then that y-intercept of negative 2. All right, next up here, uh, now we're talking perpendicular, which is opposite reciprocal. Uh, so this one, the m is 1 half, but my, that means my slope is going to be uh, negative 2 over 1, which would just be negative 2. So I'm going to do the same thing here, y equals mx plus b. I'm going to plug in uh, negative 2 for my m, and then I'm going to use the point x comma y. So I got 3 equals negative 2 times 1 plus b. Um, and I'm going to add the 2 over, and b equals 5. So then I would get y equals negative 2x plus 5.